Thank you so much, Nanette. And on behalf of uh, my co-authors, Nazrul and Neva, I, Mahima Hada, would also like to thank the ARF and the Journal of Advertising Research in publishing our paper, giving us the award, and giving us the opportunity to present our research. So this paper, as the title says, is really on comparing digital and television, specifically in video advertising. And the broad question we really look at is, how much should you spend on digital video advertising? Right? And we take, look at the television as the comparison point. So the motivation from this paper really came from what we are really seeing increasingly happening in the US advertising media, which has now, of course, been accelerated uh, by the COVID-19 crisis. So all from 2015 to 2019, the shift in media spending on internet is actually been 51%, uh, while the overall is 19%. And in television, the shift is only 30, 13%. So the, ex the increase in investment in online video advertising is actually increasingly coming from the at the expense of television, right? And the question is, is this a good idea? Now, even within digital uh, advertising, Online videos are the fastest growing online ad format. You know, that started off with pre-roll almost 10 years ago when YouTube said they would do pre-roll and it was this whole uproar actually more than 10 years ago, uh, you know, that they would show start showing pre-roll advertising. And now, you know, there's mid and so on. So the entire format has extensively grown. So even, so if you look at the relative growth rate, uh, online video is actually growing more than 2.5 times than uh, everything else in the internet as well, which is search, banner, social media, everything, right? So the, the question which really comes from uh, linear TV versus, uh, versus online video is actually because it's the same video, it's the same production, it's the same brand message, you know, it's the same communication, which can a consumer can actually consume it from linear TV or online sources. And as we just saw, the entire the shift on digital video is coming from online TV, is coming from television. So invest, so firms are basically taking their money from television and putting it into, um, uh, putting it into digital video. And so the big question is, what is the right mix? How much should you really be making a shift, and why? Right. So we look at efficiency in terms of sales and footfalls. We look at effectiveness in terms of ROI. And we also look at if efficiency and effectiveness is better for digital video, what is the optimal range in which you should actually be spending money on it? And why are actually firms doing this, right? So it's, it's they're basically following consumers. People, the American consumer, in, if you look at the age, age of 18 to 24, uh, they spend more than 10 hours consuming online video content, right? As opposed to, you know, the older group which used to spend that much time on television. So as the entire demographic and consumers shift from consuming content on their television to consuming it on cbs.com or YouTube or Instagram TV now, uh, the, uh, the forms are actually following them. And the question is, to what extent should you really be making the shift and why? So if you're going to compare effectiveness of TV on, you know, of your, uh, of your advertisement on online versus linear TV, it's not a straightforward comparison because the media formats are different. You actually cannot do uh, your traditional A-B testing. Um, attribution is harder because there is a gap between when you saw the ad, you know, and when you actually made the purchase or visited a restaurant. Right? So you, it's almost impossible, really, to do it in a realistic manner via experiments. And therefore, we basically decided to take an econometric modeling based approach. I'll spend a few minutes on these equations, so that's really clear what all we're trying to capture here. So. Z is our final dependent variable. That's actually depending on what the form wants to measure, 
restaurant footfalls, online sales, you know, all of that. Uh, the X variables are basically the non-media variables, you know, seasonality, um, which market area the campaign was run on, and so on. The Y variables are the actual variables related to media spend. How much did you spend on TV? How much did you spend on online video? How much did you spend on search? How much did you spend on banner? In which market at, at which time we look at two weeks periods okay? and the betas capture their effectiveness. Now this, which is basically a form of a cubless, uh, dog cubless model um, also needs to take into account the particular facets of advertising. And that's basically two. One of them essentially is uh, retention, which is called ad stock. And ad stock essentially says is there is, um, you know, there's a retention of the last time I saw an ad to when I see it again, to when I will actually make my sale, right? And that's your Q, your ad stock variable. Then you have the scale variable, which basically recognizes that the impact is not linear, right? There is a saturation effect of how much I have spent on my ad based on how much I retained from last time. And that actually impacts my advertising effectiveness as well. So we take into account all these facets into our main econometric model to really say how much does a dollar spent on online video and a dollar spent on television and a dollar spent on search impact a firm's footfalls in the restaurant or sales. And that is basically uh, the model that we go ahead with. And we do this, we apply this model to two firms. So, oh, very quickly, sorry, features of the model, which we basically talked about, we use existing transaction data. Uh, I talked about how we do search media, online video banner. There's also this entire notion of, of synergies between various media, right? So search has been shown to actually positively interact with all other media. So if I spend money on search and people actually on Google search and people search for the keyboard, they look at my ad, then the impact of that on any banner ad is actually far more than search alone. Okay. Uh, we talked about how experiments are really do not answer the question, but experiments allow you to answer causality. So in the econometric model, you could basically use the Granger causality method. We don't do that in the paper, but it's, it's pretty straightforward. And I talked about all the uh, covariates that we use, the, you know, the competition spending, coupons, all the market areas, seasonality, holidays, we take into account all those. Okay. All right, so now study one. Study one, we basically did it at a quick serve restaurant chain in the United States. Uh, they, have a, they have about 700 outlets. And at the time of when we did the study with them, about $40 million in their annual marketing budget. The purpose of the restaurant chain was they really wanted to reassess their media plan and to maximize the footfalls to the restaurants. So a dependent variable here, the Z for the first study was footfalls. How many people actually visit the restaurant? And this is, at that time, this, is what, this was their media spend. 78% went on TV and uh, only 6% went online. Even with this low level of support, just, just 6%, we find that, uh, in the pre-roll ads that they spent, the effectiveness was much, much higher, almost seven times that of television, as was the ROI, right? So zero point, so one dollar spent on television was actually 0 0.91 in terms of footfalls and expenditure, and 6.54 of the money spent on pre-roll. So these two graphs basically show that, oh my God, pre-roll advertising is like the best thing possible since sliced bread. And you know, that's where you should be putting all the money in. But that's not the entire story because we have not yet talked about saturation. So if we need to do the saturation analysis on the restaurant footfalls, this is basically what we get, right? So this essentially shows the blue line is television, how much you spend on television and how much it led to footfalls in your restaurant. And the purple line is how much you spent on digital video and how much was your footfalls in your restaurant. 
So the first thing you can see is there is a higher effectiveness at low spend, right? So when I'm spending less, I get a significant more bang for my buck in digital video. But after a point of time, I hit saturation really early. So I can continue spending, but I'm not actually getting any additional footfalls. I have actually maximized the reach of digital video while the maximization of reach for television comes much fast, uh, comes much later. So in terms of reach, there is still no comparison between television and digital video. That's first. The second thing we did after this was we actually ran an optimal mix. So if this is where your spending is right now and I saturate, where should, how much should I spend on digital video? And we actually find that doubling it is okay. But if you more than double your spend on digital video, your actually ROI starts dropping, right? So it's not a good idea. Then we looked at another study, and this time we looked at CPG sales. Um, this was done with a Fortune 500 brand, and they have more than $100 million in annual marketing budget, out of which 66% was allocated to television and 11% to online videos. So this is 11% to online videos and not to uh, the entire internet, just to online videos. Um, in this study, we also had the opportunity to look at different uh, kinds of campaigns, standard news and reminder campaigns, and see where the effectiveness is uh, really best for each media. Uh, what we found post analysis was that if you look at TV and digital video here, digital videos were much better in news and reminder advertising. And news, they are basically innovation support but not so far standard. And of course, online search and social media also yielded a high ROI. Uh, in fact, search was much higher. So if you, know, so one, if you look at this, there is a slightly mixed message here in terms of news and reminder being better for digital videos, but standard TV being better for standard. And so the question was, if you look at the saturation graphs, for news and reminders, they were actually very similar to what we saw for the restaurant. But we were really interested in seeing what happens in the standard uh, advertising campaign because the differences in ROI here were actually not that great. And this is what we find. So it's it's the same story, but in a you know in a, in, with less effectiveness differences. So. Digital video, the purple line once again, has much has higher effectiveness at low spend, but it saturates early. You can see how the graph is actually different from base to restaurants uh, than CPG because well, different industries, but the implications are the same. Digital video saturates early. Low spend, highly effective, but early saturation. Television, not that effective at low spend, but the reach is much higher and it saturates much later. So what are the main takeaways from this presentation and, and the paper? So television essentially has higher retention. We didn't, I didn't show those results, but we estimated them. Higher scale parameters and higher retention compared to digital videos. Uh, you know, even though research has shown that people are a lot more involved when they see a digital video, maybe because you're, you know, you know it's 30 seconds, you're sitting on it, you're waiting for your Instagram, uh, you know, video to start, but television's retention is still much higher compared to digital videos, and therefore the, it actually saturates much later. Uh, you know, at low levels of support, the sales volume that can be attributed to digital videos is actually higher than attributable to television. So when you're spending low amounts of money, it's actually digital video that is carrying the uh, carrying your sales as opposed to television. And because this, therefore its effectiveness is high, its ROI is high, but the reach is highly limited. So to really use online video effectively, it is okay to move part of your expenditure from TV, from linear TV to digital video, but in a limited manner, not too much, right? As soon as you start going beyond certain ranges, your, uh, the, your reach saturates and once reach saturates, ROI drops. So in conclusion, TV is still important and uh, you know, with consumers still watching television and the high reach of television, 
it's not yet time to completely do the digital media shift from television to online video. Just a bit. Thank you.